So, Luke, all right? Luke, as I'm so excited to be preaching about Luke because Luke actually was preaching to the Gentiles. So when he wrote his Gospels, it was directed at the Gentiles, which is very cool. And I didn't plan on saying this, but since Pastor crushed your hopes and dreams, saying that the wise men weren't in the manger, I want to bring up um, on, uh, Luke, on Luke 2, the shepherds were in the manger. So we can at least <laughs> keep the shepherds in our nativity scenes, <laughs> right? Because the, they came and they went to pay their taxes. Throw those wise men out of there. <laughs> Keep the shepherds. That's all right. We're here for the little people, right? We care about the poor and the oppressed and the poor little shepherds out all night with their sheep. But they were there, and the angels came and everything. But what it really excites me about this is hope in the promise of God, God keeping his promise. So Jesus Christ is the light of the world, and Pastor went way long, so I'm hoping he doesn't cut me off early <laughs> as well, right? That's why I didn't cut him off, just to let you know. So we're in Luke, tw Luke 2, we're going to start with chapter tw with um, verse 22, and it says, And when time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up. Who's him? Jesus. They brought Jesus up. So this is after the time passed, the firstborn needs to be redeemed, through Jesus, through God. He seems ho is holy. The firstborn of every um, family is holy to God in this time. They need to be redeemed. So that's what they're doing. They're going to the temple to redeem um, the firstborn, which is Jesus Christ. Uh, so the time came for their purification. According to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was a righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the spirit, he came in the spirit into the temple, and when his parents brought the child Jesus to do him according to the custom of the law, which was to redeem him, right, with the two turtle doves, he took him up in his arms and blessed the Lord God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in this presence of all peoples a light, for a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. So when we think of Christmas, it's more than just the baby Jesus laying in a manger. It's more than the shepherds. It's more than the wise men. This is the time of God fulfilling his promises. And there are lots of promises being fulfilled here. And the first one I want you to see is the promise to the serpent that Eve's offspring will strike at his head. By Jesus coming down to us and living his life here on earth and living a sinless life and then dying on the cross for us and our sins to bring salvation to us, he allowed us to be the light. He allowed us to strike back at the, at the serpent's head. He says, I'll put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. I want to let you know right now that though, though the world's full of evil, the world is full of hopelessness, the world is full of famine, the world's full of drug addiction, the world is full of pornography, the world is for, full of women being taken into sexual bondage right now, I want you to know that Satan doesn't win. Satan doesn't win, and because Jesus was born in that manger, he has given us the power. He was here. Christmas Day that we're celebrating is the start of God answering his promise to us right here and his promise to Satan that he's going to lose, that Satan's only going to be able to strike at our heels while we strike at his heads. And how do we strike at his heads? Not because we're awesome, not because we're righteous, but because Jesus Christ was. And we have the power inside of us to do that because Jesus came here on earth. There's a lot more to that, but I only got a few minutes. <laughs> and he promised Simeon, the second promise that was fulfilled that day, is he promised Simeon that he would see the Christ. Simeon was a righteous man. He loved the Lord. 
And the Lord apparently loved him because he promised him he would not die until he saw the Christ. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord as Christ. In Luke 2.26. I want to let you know that God keeps his promises. Oh, it may seem dark. And I'm sure Simon was saying, hey, Lord, I'm getting old. You know, I'm, my, my old knees hurt when I try to walk up and down all these steps at the temple. Lord, my back hurts when I try to get out of this terrible bed that's really not very comfy because we don't have posturpedic mattresses yet, <laughs> right? Lord, why couldn't you have done that first? I don't know. But Lord, I believe that I'm going to see your Christ one day. And as he held Jesus in his hands, he gave glory to God that he is a God that fulfills his promises. It may not be in the time that we think. It may not be when we would like to. It may not even be in the way that we think it's going to happen. As you saw all the Jews when Jesus came, it wasn't coming in the way they thought it was going to happen. But God keeps his promises. He says, For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, not the Jewish people, uh, not, not, the, uh, not, not the Sadducees, uh, not any of those people, but all people, all people. You have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation unto the Gentiles and for the glory to your people Israel. See, it was never supposed to be hidden Salvation was never supposed to be hidden. It's not supposed to be hidden today. We're supposed to bring this good news of Jesus Christ being born and living amongst us and, and, and not sinning and going to that cross and dying for our sins to all people. We're not supposed to hide it in a church. We're not supposed to hide it in our homes. We're not supposed to hide it anywhere. We're supposed to bring it to everybody because it is delight unto all people. It is God's pro promise fulfilled in our lives. He promised the Jews the light of the world. I am the Lord. I have called you, Isaiah 42, 6. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light unto the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prisons, those who sit in darkness. That is our world today as we walk within, two, within 200 feet of this place. There are people in darkness right now. There are people that think that they can't go on anymore. There are people that don't know that Jesus Christ was actually born in that manger and walked on this planet and died for our sins. There are people that think they have no hope. They don't know the good news of the gospel. They don't know that Jesus Christ came and, and lived and died for us. They don't know that God knows how many hairs are on our heads. It gets easier to count mine every year as more and more go away. <laughs> they don't know that. We know that. They don't know that if, if they just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and, and, and they take him as their personal saviors, that they'll never be alone in darkness again. Oh, it's not that things aren't going to happen to them. It's not that they're going to struggle in life but they'll always have someone with them. And ultimately, while Satan strikes at our heels, we strike at his head. Because Jesus Christ defeated death. And if we're born again Christians who have asked Jesus Christ to be our saviors, we too will not be bound by death. We are covered in his righteousness, in his blessings in his life oh here's the last one i think i, I think i even kept my 10 minutes today <laughs> jesus is that light i want you to know jesus is that light jesus is the light of the world again jesus spoke to him say, spoke to them saying i am the light of the world 
Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 8, 12. Oh, I know I'm not talking about the manger, but I am totally talking about the manger. I, I don't know. I, I get excited at Christmas time and not for the Christmas trees and, and not for the presents. I get excited because Jesus came for me. Nancy, Jesus came for you. John, Jesus came for you. Jesus came for you. Jesus came for them out there. Jesus came so we don't have to be slaves to the darkness. We don't have to die in addiction. We don't have to walk in that darkness and wallow in, in, in that depression, depression. We don't have to sit with a gun to our head wondering if we should pull that trigger. In my bus ministries up north, I want you to know, I used to pick up troubled teens. I had two of them commit suicide. One of them hung themselves in a shed. One of them stabbed himself in the chest with a knife because it was just too dark. The one that hung himself in the chest, two, I mean, hung himself in the shed, two days before he hung himself, I remember sitting on the church steps pleading with him to accept Jesus Christ as a Savior. I'll never forget. He tapped me on my shoulder. He said, don't worry, Brother Mike. Maybe next week. Next week never came. Next week I was at his funeral. I want you to know that this is serious stuff. Jesus came for you here. Jesus came in that manger, not because it's cool so we can have those little nativity scenes, which are really cool, by the way. <laughs> I like them. But so we can go out. What's that children's song, This Little Light of Mine? I'm going to let it shine. Hide, o hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. And let it shine, by the way, is not when a, when a clerk at the grocery store says happy holidays that you get mad and say Merry Christmas. That's not letting it shine. That's doing the opposite. It's telling somebody about that Christmas story. It's telling somebody that Jesus came down here and, and the king of the universe made himself small for us, for everyone. He wants everyone. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me, whoever follows me, whoever follows me, doesn't say whatever Jew. I'm so glad it doesn't say if Mike follows me. You know how many Mikes there are in this world? How do I know if that's me? It says whoever follows me. I want you to know that God keeps his promises. And that is fulfilling the promise of the Jews being the light of the world. That's fulfilling the promise of that bloodline. Ruth, that kinsman redeemer that Ruth had. You, you realize that that was a picture of the kinsman redeemer of Jesus Christ coming, redeeming us. Just as Mary brought Jesus to be redeemed for those two turtle doves, Jesus redeems us for our sin. That sin price he paid for us. So as you're celebrating Christmas tomorrow, celebrate it, smile, tell somebody about the real Christmas story. I have made you the light for the Gentiles. I have made you. I have made you. Who's he talking to? Us that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. Leah's going to sing us a special song.